Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the SPL for the final game of Saturday. I am Hindu Man, and alongside me today is somebody who I've never had the pleasure of casting with. Well, now you have the pleasure, but we'll I mean, I, I'm, I'm casting with Hindu Man, oh, the world famous. Chill. And you know, I like your shirt. Where'd you get it? I, I, it was a Walmart special. Okay. How, oh. much, how much you pay? Uh, I, pl I paid 50. 50. Mine, mine, mine was... Sale. Three dollars. Three dollars. Three dollars. I hate, I hate everything. Wrecked. <laughs> Wrecked completely. For some reason, being told I'm very quiet, so I'll try and deal with that and get very loud all of a sudden. But yeah, today we're going to be seeing the two bottom teams of the North American SPL facing off, and one of them is going to win. Yes, so finally we will see a win oh, oh, they from Cog. Win. They, they could, but I think that's the thing, though. I think... Both of them getting one win is the worst thing that could happen. I think if one of the teams comes out with a 2-0 here, they have a chance to avoid relegations. However, if they both trade one game, that means they're both two games behind still Legion. And yeah. it's that, it's going to be much harder. They're very likely to be the two teams if they trade out. And if they are the two bottom teams, then what order are they going to finish in? Because mm -hmm. generally the team that's going to come bottom is probably going to have the harder face-off exactly. the challenger boys coming up to have to try and deal with them. So this game all in all is very important to try and give them the A to get above the other one and B, give them a shot at just getting out of relegations in the first place. For sure. And it's it continues to be the day of substitutes. We saw two substitutes in last game. In this game, we're going to be seeing Meerkat, who's taking, I believe, his SATs. He's going to be subbed out for Scary D, who is a ranked player and also a challenger player. He's played something in the Challenger Cup. I can't remember exactly what team he was on, but I have seen him up and around there, at least quarter semi-finals, making it there with teams before. Um, has understanding of the jungle, quite clearly, like he's been brought into the Pro League, and you don't really get brought up to this level unless you have some sort mm -hmm. of skill. So I expect to see that they'll be okay, but... But what happens with junglers, let's be honest, you've played on teams before, when you're in a jungle, when you've got a new player on the team, it's going to be substituting and you don't play with them very regularly, what happens? I mean, I guess your synergy's gone. It, it, it's going to be rough, especially in the solo lane where you're going to have to be matching up against the best players. And I think Meerkat is one of the better solo laners in North America, or at the very least, he can compete with the best solo laners in North America. Cog as a team hasn't been able to make stuff work because of roll swap. And I mean, even Meerkat went to the mid lane for a cup for a for one set during yeah, this year. It's just forward. it's just like no consistency, but Meerkat gave him his nod, and I, I do trust Meerkat's intuition on these players, so I expect him to be able to fill that role. Well, I mean, on top of that, we did see, like, Makeup did used to play jungle as well, so there was yes. an opportunity they could have had him yep. go into the jungle again. Makeup was pretty good with the Hombats, from what I remember, from mm -hmm. when we saw him back in the days yep. before he's, like, actually on this COG roster now. So. Yeah, I mean, he, he brought it to the solo back when that was popular as well. That's right, and then we, we have a little look as well at Denial Esports, sorry, Enemy Esports as well. Betium, Flying God, now this is a very young team. Like, mm -hmm. um, they've got some professionals on there, Matty Pocket, Jerby, they've been around a long time. I know a lot of people don't give them much credit in terms of like, maybe they're off the boil now, they're past the sell-by date, so to speak, is what a lot of people seem to think. Do you not think that like, experience I, is going to factor in? It's it's weird because I don't think that... It, it's much easier for, I think, Shadow Q and Mace and Shing who are bringing in really... They brought in the, the cream of the crop from the rank. They brought in Bronx and, and Mark and Baskin, and Denial has utilized these players who were the best ranked players, and it was a much easier transition. I think these aren't the best ranked players originally, and they jumped into the SPL straight off. Mm -hmm. Didn't really have too much challenger experience. So we see Flying or Nah get pulled in the middle of the split. We see these other players, and they do have a much harder time transitioning, and I think Jerby has actually been the most consistent player on this team. He's had his off games, but you he's should also... Expect that. You should expect him to be the rock of the team, because yes. the other ones are newer to the SPL, not been in this sort of scene to an extent. They're still learning the ropes, so to mm -hmm. speak, and so Jerby should be that that rock to an extent in the mid lane. One thing, though, is he hasn't really tried out, or I haven't seen him at the very least in SPL play, try out these Neath and Hunter's mid that we're seeing much more commonly. He is playing Giannis and Agni primarily, and his Giannis has been fantastic, and mm. I think that's going to be a key, really, to enemy here, is they're going to want to draft, draft a, a very good god for Jerby to be that rock yeah. in this series early on in the first couple three. So he's looking for Agni, he's looking for Giannis, maybe Poseidon as mm -hmm. well, just something solid in the yes. mid lane that's going to be able to farm up safely and be good for the mid half. He's yeah. as well. Okay, cool. So, I mean, they're the two teams we're going to see. What did you vote for this week on the... I, I took COG 2-0. I think Enemy still has too much to work on. Their team, like Nox, they have talent, but it's it's not there, and I don't think it's going to be there until the end of the split. It's At first I thought, alright, give them a couple weeks, see where they are. I just... After the couple weeks, they're not there. They still have a long way to go. But I think if, if they stick it out and finally stay with a consistent roster, whatever that mm. roster is, they need to take it, move forward with it. And if, if they win, it's a different story. But if they lose, they're likely 
going to be facing relegation. Yeah, consistency is the biggest key, though, isn't it? Like, mm -hmm. You've got to have a consistent roster so you can get to know each other, understand how each yes. other play, and then on top of that, bring in the god pools that they've got too, because switching your god pools is also a big thing too, because it, it changes the dynamic of how the team runs as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you really look at Titan, right? They they switched up their lanes, and Ataraxia brings in these hunters to this mm -hmm. solo lane, and it's really opened up opportunities for Titan right. to experiment and. Ataraxi is actually the only player to win with Apollo in the soul lane after about, I think, 10 games with the god this, oh, this is that, split. Is that what it is right now? Apollo is the only god to win with Apollo. A person to win with Apollo. In solo lane. In solo, okay. In solo. Okay. Many have tried. He's the only one to accomplish that. But that's just under play, be playing hunters in yeah. and out consistently. But, I mean, it, I but it, like I said, it, it, it's opening it up that's for true. these teams. That's true. So when you're looking at the two teams on paper now, and what, so we, you're expecting to see Jerby draft something very, very safe in the mid lane. Yes. What else are we expecting? Are we expecting to see Cog do the opposite and look for to go hyper aggressive on Jerby or just like look for picking off the new players? I think they're going to focus on getting Homie FA a god he's very comfortable with. Homie FA has recently moved to support. It's, it's not these players that are moving from a carry role to a carry role. He is moving from a jungle role to a support role. Something he has never done in a very... He's never done. He's been mm -hmm. a jungler player his entire his entire smite career, yep. and he's moving to a new role, and he hasn't really put in the hours, but he's playing a lot of aggressive supports. Well, there's a player over in EU who's done that as well. Okay. Rafa. Oh, yeah, Rafa of course. Rafa used to be a jungler, yes. so he's gone through the exact same thing. So basically, what you can see with that is like Rafa managed to transfer over, had adapting come to the jungle for Epsilon, mm -hmm. and then he's slowly making the transition there because it's, it's a, to an extent, it's a similar role, because yes. you, you're almost a secondary okay. jungler to an extent. You just gotta get used yes. to the laning phase at the start. You also of the game. have to get used to. I, I need to peel. I need to stop trying to car carry stop. kills yep. or chase kills. And like, I, I do want to go back to the Raffer point. What do we see from Raffer at first? Hercules, just Thor, yep. Thanatos, Ares, just super aggression. And I, aggression I think time. we're seeing the same. We're gonna see the same thing with Homie Fe. Mm. I don't know if he is gonna draft Ares, but in his ranked games, he's been playing a lot of it. Well, it'll, it'll be someone either A, aggressive, or B, very, very, not necessarily safe. easy to play, but safe. Like a Sylvanas or yeah, an Athena, Sylvanas the, really Athena. the standard you know, two, the stand you'd say. Yeah, the standard yeah. two Guardians, or we'll see him go for something super aggressive. Okay. Like, I expect that, because like, if there's going to be the same sort of transition that Rafa had from for Epsilon, it's probably going to be the same thing. We should be bringing you picks and bands up on your screen now. Bit of a different situation for you here. Old school for fun. Yep, and Eric the Vincent's going to be bringing them to you here. Let's take a look. First band comes out. It's going to be Athena. Yes. And that's going to be taken out by Cognitive Gaming, so they're not going to be looking to draft that in a variety of roles that we've really seen the god drafted on. It's picked up. Eager likes to run it in three lanes. Some teams only like two. Some teams like support only. But Cog just taking away the option. But if they're going to take if they take away Athena now, they've taken away Sylvanas across the way. So this is all Guardian focus here. What what would you be looking at as first pick then? You're looking for the other Guardian to spare. You're probably there's a lot of high AOE and high CC damage taken out right now, mm -hmm. you're likely to pick up someone else who's going to bring that. Hoonbots is a very popular pick in North America. We could see that first picked, very likely. Well, last pick waiting for it to come through at the moment to see what's going on. Somebody wants to be his friend. He's got hey, a friend. Eric, friend you finally have friends. It's about time he gets one. 400,000 gems, guys. Get them in. Jibaloke is going to be the last ban from that. Now we're going to see the first pit locked in. And not surprised, it's going to be Neath. No surprise at all. Neath is just this incredible flex pick. We saw it first picked in the past couple series as well. It's just so good. And ah, Pooch highlighted. That is mm -hmm. not a safe pick, but it is a very high damaging pick. It is a high damaging pick. And what we see out of this is that he's able to control fights because of the slow from the crypts. That's the main thing. His ultimate is very, very strong, zones out areas for a long period of time. Um, but he's squishy and he's not got mobility. He's squishy, but if he's fighting in 50 protections from hey. Bologna, it's a lot different. <laughs> yeah, they that is great. huge. If they if they lock this in, just think of how much AoE zone control the team has. On objectives, you're not going to be able to fight into a Bologna ult, the Eagles rally, or empty the crypts. It's, mm -hmm. it's a very AoE teamfight oriented focus And so those far. two ultimates from there, the Eagles Rally and the Crips together, either or can set the other one up to yes, be confirmed exactly. so much easier. So it's a good combo. Love the pick a Bastet though coming out from Cog here. This is aimed at taking out this R Posh. It's difficult to bring him down, but if you can jump in, deal damage, get out again before he can get any burst on you, that's what Bastet looks for. What's, what's really good about this Bastet pick is Apooch's main damage source isn't his ability. It's it's his exp the explosions right. that happen. That's right. Bastet is able to jump in get her kit off, get her bleeds off, and then jump out before, before that explosion. explosions happen. Jerby's likely going to have to set up his corpses before Bastet even jumps on him. That's so right. if Bastet does jump on him, he can instantly explode it. 
if he tries to set that up afterwards, it's going to be rough for him. Well, we're going to see Aries locked in for enemy here as well. Not surprised to see Aries locked in with these Guardian Bands as well as the Bastet on the table here, Adonis. I expect that's probably... I, I like the pick just because it's going to deal with Bastet well and Neath. Yes. Aries, the cripple is very strong against Neath. Uh, backflip, it seems like a very safe ability and, uh, until you get crippled out, and that's really <laughs> yeah. what you're going to want to do is shut down that Neath. But it's important to try and shut her down before she gets Heartseeker and Ossia online. Once she gets that, she can really outbox the airy chain damage mm -hmm. and is able going to be able to heal up not only with the Aussie, but also with the heal in her kit and Unravel. That's right, with the Unravel. I mean, with this composition, I can see Quinn out from Cognitive here. It's looking very like an early game focus with the Bastet for the early kills, early aggression with the cats as well. Across the way, though, from what I feel from enemy, we're looking more mid to late right now. Yeah, it, definitely mid. I think right now mid is their their goal focus, and you see three huge AOE teamfight ultimates coming out from them. They really need to look for, I think, some hard carries or some gods to get them through this early game. They're going with Ares. You're going to have to pair it with a pretty safe hunter that can carry late game, Rom. Very, very good choice, I think. Very solid choice for that. Yeah, he is. I mean, his matchup against Neath, if it's going to be in that lane, it's not the greatest I mean, You're going to lose no matter what against you, you Neath. You are, to an extent. Yeah, I mean, you're always going to get pushed into the tower for the most part. There's not any stopping that. But we saw the Ymir banned out by Cognitive, and now they're hovering over Apollo, and that is going to be locked in, so more than likely the solo lane for them. And it's still going to be Homie Faye left to pick one he's going to finish this composition off. We're probably looking at mid here, or are we looking for solo? He, he plays Sobek. So Homie Fa could be grabbing that Sobek. Um... They could also run this Sobek in the solo lane that's as true, well. That's true. Oh, you, you can't pick Gavin to Ares, can you? You can't. I mean, you can. America, please. No, no, you can't. You, you can. No, you can't. You what? just did. What? You get Cataclysm the ult. I, I will call enemy esports win this game based off that pick. Okay. That's I, a pretty I, feel like, I feel like Gandhi right now. But yeah, that's, <laughs> that's exactly how it is. It's like, uh, honest to God, like, putting Ares in lane against a Geb, it's like a free farm lane. I guess, though, the one benefit he's going to have if he runs Neath with this, like, oh, less Apollos. See where Apollo goes first. If Apollo goes duo, I think Geb Apollo are really going to have a hard time. If he's going to be Neath Geb, maybe Geb survives the lane in phase because Neath will clear it. I mean, the thing, the thing is, likely it's going to be Bastet Jungle, Apollo Solo. No. See... <sighs> This, this is interesting. Are they going to go the Neath mid? We've also seen Bastet mid played. It's very That's unlikely. True. Well, we're in game. It's, it's go okay, it's going to be Neath mid. It's going okay. to be the Neath mid for Horrywind, and Homie Fae is going to be playing that Geb. So he's gone for the very safe pick yes. in this lane. We talked about Homie Fae moving from the jungle into the support role, and it's going to be one of those games where he's got to play very supportive and play very safe. He's gone for a safe god. The problem is he's against an Ares. And I really don't like the matchup on paper. Like, Geb, Geb really struggles. He can't roll out when he gets in there. If he tries to use a knock-up to get rid of um, Ares away from him, he can just sear him flash through it because you knock up immune. It causes so many issues for a Geb to deal with. And then it also forces Cataclysm to stop the no escape. But looking at his start, he's expecting that aggression coming out. You see, he's picked up... Normally, you'll see about three and three potions. Look at what Homie FA has done. Four health potions, two multi-pots. Yep. It is a solo lane start. But, he knows he's going to be getting no abused. no Vanguard. No Vanguard. That's he, a risky he play. Go I feel, I feel that's a bit risky not going for the extra health and the extra the extra protections you're going to get to deal with the Ares. It is going to be an Apollo in lane with him too. And so for me, this lane's going to go to Rama and Ares unless like some big play comes out for them. Maybe they're going to rely on Beckham on this jungle Bastet to start rotating over early, look for some early pressure before mid Harpies. Additionally, even though I, I agree with you, I, I think the Ares Rom should outpush this lane, especially early on, basically mm -hmm. based on the fear they output, because if Geb gets caught, he's going to be in trouble. But Famous Hate has gone the Heartseeker build, which is standard on Apollo now. Meanwhile, Vedium has gone the Devo's glove. So yep. if Apollo gets poked out, he's not really going to be able to sustain as, as, as effectively as the Devo glove start will. That's true. So no early invades coming out from either team. Just going to farm up their own jungle for the time being. Talk to me through, though, about the solo lane here. We're going to be seeing Scary D on this Sobek up against Tyr. It's going, to be, it's going to be a pretty standard matchup, I think. No one's going to have too much issue with this. I think they're both going to be farming out. You can cancel out the Fearless with your pluck, which is really what Scary D is going to be looking to do. But it's mm -hmm. very hard to do in this matchup. Additionally, if you miss, you put yourself in a bad spot. I think both are going to be able to just farm up. And Sobek has a self-heal as well. Tier should outpush this lane early, but give it about six, seven minutes and... 
Basically, Sobek is going to be able to itemize better than the tier can. Evens, right. Well, Flynon Nod did rotate mid nice and early. Going to go for the back. Harpy steal those ones away from Cognitive. As you can see, they can do this because obviously, um, enemy have also pushed up on the left hand side with that Ares Rama, which we discussed. So there's no pressure on these guys here. They're going to take that away. Basset has rotated, and they're looking to fight this early. Let's they want to get a kill. The question is, do they have the damage against Jerby? Well, the pounce comes in, and now we have that damage from the Spirit Owl. They do have the damage against Jerby. He's going to go down for first blood, and you can see that Keith, sorry, Flight on Oz is going to try and back away. I don't think they can find a kill here, but a big pick. An incredibly big pick against, really, Ah Pooch. The way to beat him is to shut him down early or have a god that can dive him without worrying about retaliation. Mm. Now that he's taken a spill early, it's going to be very hard for him. Yeah, I mean, he is very squishy, and that's one thing you'll see. Bickham, though, trying to actually get some farm back away from enemy from their own journey. He did steal those ones away, so he's doing okay for himself, even though, uh, yeah, he lost his back harpies. He got himself an assist, though. Yep, very slow-paced game now, and I don't think there's going to be too much action until mid-harpies, and enemy has really lost their mid-harpy fight advantage, because Empty the Crypts won't be available for that. Meanwhile, we're going to see Spirit Arrow and World Weaver available for Neath. It's very likely with that World Weaver, they're going to look to pick Jerby once again. He's not going to be able to get away from the cats. He'll have to burst them down or make sure that Flying or Gnaw is in position to protect him when that comes up. Well, let's see how this one plays out for two minutes 30 into the game. Tuning in at the moment, we're famous, ain't the homie Faye. The new support for the team now translates into that role. Just going to farm up for the time being. The rotation should come out from Matty Pike. He's Matty Pocky. You can see him rotating now at, alongside his Apollo teammate as well with that one. Sorry, with Rama. Rara. Vetium is going to be heading over there. So left Harpies are definitely going to be taken by enemy here by the looks of it. I don't think we're going to see a contest out of Cognitive. Cognitive though, hugging the right hand side. Bickham's in position to pick those ones up as the cancellation pretty much. Yeah, they're going to trade out. There's, there's no reason to risk fighting this. Their dual lane got pushed out by the Ares and Vedium, and you can't fight a man down. Even even if Jerby's not level 5, you can't fight into that. Well, the good news is Homie FA does manage to get level 5 with that Geb, which is always the scary thing about the mid harpies because you're never quite level 5 on the Geb. You're rotating around, there's an air he's about, and there's also some other danger factors on that team to deal with. So he does hit that level 5, so he's starting to get to his position where he's got Cataclysm to deal with a no escape. Yep, and speaking of no escape here is... We really need to see beads come out from Heroin and become very fast, or Matty Pocket is likely, to, because Matty Pocket's likely to get Blink on his next back if he doesn't want to rush Hog 3, and that's when it becomes very dangerous for these Hunters mid that they like to stack damage early. They don't really like the beads because they're pretty safe, but against an Ares, if you elect to go more damage, if you elect to finish off your boots first, you put yourself in a dangerous position. Well, you can see Jerby's working on his boots now. Did start off with the Lost Artifact as standard. We're going to be working on the boots as well. Probably cooldown, do you expect? Or do you expect I'm, I'm seeing boots? a lot of max cooldown coming mm -hmm. out from Apushas for now in this first iteration that we're seeing him in the Pro League. And that's just because how much sustain he has right. in his kit. His passive giving him health and mana when he eats his own corpses. So mid-game, if players get poked out, they're able to basically spam his abilities and heal right back up and on top of that, it lowers fights the that they should Well, he lowers the cooldown so you can spam them again. Yes, so exactly. Max Cooldown is the reason you do yes. that, yeah. So, you can see he's working towards that. See if he does go for the cooldown route. Obviously, in the mid lane, Horrywind is already working on that Heartseeker. Has it that stack in 11 stacks so far, as well as Famous Hate does have three stacks online for himself. No other Heartseekers online just yet, though, as we do have Devourer's Gauntlets for Vetium this game. That's going to be stacked up in really just a, a poke war for now. Both these gods have sustain in their kit. They're not too worried, but Scary D is taking a lot of damage from those archers. He pressed three. He's hey, hey. Second in strike. It's a hard thing to do. Everything's good. Well you, well, you did say you mentioned this earlier. Mike Pocky will go, probably go back and get Blink. He has got it, but it looks like Cognitive are the ones that are going to go aggressive. Here. Cataclysm coming out. Nice burst damage onto Jerby. Already annihilated before he could do anything. No escape is not going to save anybody's life. He's going to drop down two. And another two quick kills for Cog. And that's really the weakness of drafting this Apooch and this Ares is if one gets behind early, the other can't protect, they can't protect each other. And you saw that there. There was nothing that Matty Pocket could do to defend Jerby. Bayum does go up trying to get some snipe damage off to who's tanking it. The Gulf Fury is still alive. And we're going to see Flying Lord does bring down Beckham, still fighting and dashing away for the time being. He saves the Gulf Fury, but can he save his own life in this situation here? Beads is early, but the World Weaver damage is too much because Heartseeker. Great play by Flying Arnaud there. Not only does he trade out his kill, he also forces Cog off of Gold Fury. Even if he didn't get a kill there, making sure that Cog doesn't get that 1500 early gold lead, that was huge. Well, the one thing he did use there was the beads as well, so he's going to have to be on a little bit of a three minutes he's going to take for them to come back up again. So he needs to watch his position a little bit more here for the next time. The Gulf Fury could still be a threat as Horrywind currently dealing with Jerby in the mid lane and that Maddie Pocket. 
They're both trying to farm up, but Hurry Wind at the moment, pretty safe. Yeah, and he has sustain in his kit, and you saw him. He just sat there and tanked that corpse explosion. There really wasn't anything Jerby could do about oh. that. And now Awesome, though, coming in for a gank. He doesn't really have much. Hurwin just going to stand and fight him. That was really nice for me. Spirit Arrow just stood there, stood his ground, wasn't panicking. Meanwhile, Cognitive get themselves in position to take the left Harpies away before they even there. Right-hand side, though, Awesome to the max is contesting these, but Scary D is here. And let's talk about Scary D. I mean, he's, he's stubbing in right now. He's not having a bad game. He's not doing anything wrong so far. No, we he's playing that. a very safe matchup, and there's eh, we're going to see it later on, really, once once the team fights start happening. Yeah. Is he going to get out-rotated by Awesome to the Max, who I think is one of, probably the best up-and-coming star from enemy esports. He's the one who I see playing consistently along with Jerby, and Awesome to the Max has made big plays against strong teams, and now he's going up against a sub. It's going to be really critical for Awesome to the Max to get the better on Scary D. It's mainly just playing safe and not giving up any anything yes. really in that lane, isn't it? Wait for the late game. Hope you can just work well for your team with the Lurking in the Waters. Get some damage online because he's got the Shoes of the Medjay already. There's Spirit Arrow though from Hurry Win once again. Just a ton of poke. Bit of poke onto Flying and R. Pushing him back once more. And you can see the farming just going to continue. Four to one at the moment at seven and a half minutes in. We see a lot of positioning by Cog. They're looking for a pick. They want to start this Gold Fury again. It didn't work last time. This time, they need to take out Matty Pocket once again if they want to attempt for it again. Mm -hmm. And you just see them. You just see Homie FA constantly over in this lane. He's not even really farming oh, efficiently nice between lanes. Oh, nice coming out from Horiwind again. They're poking him nice down to Matty Pocket. He's taking up a few of the minions as well. I think what they're really looking to do here is if they can get a pick with the World Weaver, get him low enough for the World Weaver just to finish them off. Yep. Is that generally what the game plan will be over and over? Yeah, and when you have these Nice mid, they're they're not really World Weaver. Oh, well blinking on all, from Austin to the Max. going to get a great fearless chain. Cataclysm does connect from Homie. Faye, but they trade one for one as Hurrywind brings down Matty Pocket. The creeps are wrecking Hurrywind right now, but he's staying in the action because he's not scared to fight. Great fail to Lawbringer coming out as well from Austin to the max. He's going to bring down the kill. Meanwhile, on the backside, though, Famous Hate did rotate in, and now he's looking for the kill onto Austin to the max in response. Needs one more finger bang. No, he doesn't as the bleed comes out from Brickham. And you can see Venom just having to back away. He did help with the snipes, though. Yeah, one for three there, and Famous Hate came in and we have two semi. We have a global ultimate and Apollo, and a semi global coming out of Vedium. You saw Vedium hit a couple snipes, but not able to make any impact into that fight at all. He comes in late. Famous Hate has already been spamming his auto attacks into that team fight, and really the important thing was he was able to pick up Jerby in the back line at the mm. start of that fight. Jerby was he threw out his alt, he threw out his initial burst, but he wasn't able to get anything more off. Well, Homie Fate did go down in that engagement, but what he did do is set that up nicely with that Cataclysm. Yes. He did manage to get that off. I think that was one of the key yes. factors to that fight. You can see, though, that we're going to see the Horrywind and uh, also uh, Bickham. They're the two that have been involved in pretty much every single kill. Seven of the eight kills we see on the side of Cognitive have all come from those two. Yeah, and we saw actually Awesome to the Max rotate in first to try and make something, but Scary D didn't allow him to really make advantage of that. You saw Scary D, he wasn't the first one there, but he was right there after, and he was able to hit a nice pluck to get a return kill as well. Well, Cognitive got a little bit aggressive here, looking for a little bit more damage onto Maddie Pocket. The bleed's going to connect. Going to keep forcing him out, though, and he's alone at the moment. As you can see, the jumping does come out as well with the Eagles rally, but Hurrywind does take out Maddie Pocket. Now that with the crypts there, they all disengage. I'm going to second. Bickham's still going into the crypts. He's just standing and watch all. that. A lot of damage, and then from the backside, Austin to the Max gets the fillers into Homie Faye. He's going to get a Cataclysm and the knockup. But a good root comes out. Lawbringer misses, but Venium snipe. It does find the kill onto Homie Faye, and Bickham's going to have to run away too. But it looks like Austin to the Max could be in a little bit of trouble here. He will go down to Bickham with that D Claw. Nice work from the boys at Cognitive, and they should potentially be able to get both mid harpies. Maybe the gold. Bit risky. It's a little bit risky. I mean, most of their ults are down, but Matty Pocket is up. He didn't fall in that engagement. He didn't use no escape. It's a little bit risky. They wouldn't be able to burst it down by the time Jerby really got there and made an impact onto them. So they're just going to look to try and take this mid tower, but with Fly and Arnaud and Matty rotating back in, they're not going to be able to do anything so about it. So much damage coming out from those spirit arrows from Hurry Wind as well. He's really actually starting to crush in this mid lane at the moment. How many stacks is he currently on? Is it four? It's 44. 44. 44 stacks and as he already completed as well. He's really doing good work on this. Yeah, his beads are down and I really want to compliment Hurrowin's just mindset. A lot of times you see Neeps get a little bit scared in the fights. You see them backflip constantly. Straight away. He is just standing there and fighting. He knows how much that Aussie and Unraveler are going to heal for and 
He's just able to stand in fights that typically players would get out of. This is going to drop down quickly. It is going to go before the blinking from Money Pocket can connect. The Nightwing Escape is going to land, though, and pulling two targets. Bickham's in a bit of trouble here. He has been hit by the chains as well, but it's actually My Pocket that goes down to hurry when the Fearless comes in from Awesome to the Max, forcing Bickham away, and the Cat won't save his life. Awesome to the Max will disengage, but Cognitive are the ones that get the Gold Fury, but they're looking for more. Yeah, enemy, I don't think, knew exactly what they wanted to do there, but a nice hit by her. Oh, when Scary is going to pick up a kill. Scary is going to root a minion, but he should get out in time. Will the, the snipe, snipe be Vettium. true? No, they will not. It's unfortunate. If it's just a little bit deeper with that crypt, it could have helped them out for Vettium to be able to get the hits because of the slow. But a good fight for Cognitive. They lost one, traded one for one. Was that? Was it one for one? I believe so. They also got Gold Fury, which is mm. the critical thing there. And enemy is still looking for kills. Does Awesome to the Max have Blink up? Does Does he have Blink ready to go teleport? He went Blink, but it is da it's down for another. It is currently now. Well, Homie Face got very, very far forward. That ate a lot of poke for free. He was trying to engage, and now he's the one that might get engaged on. The Lawbringer over the wall. The Mez was amazing from Famous Hate there. Actually brings down Tim before he could do anything. Vettium is looking for the kill. It's a famous hate, though. He's going to have to back away from this one. Ares is on the way back. And Cognitive lived to tell another tale. Fantastic Mez. That that not only saved Scary D, but it also saved Famous Hate as well, because he was immediately going to be turned on. They wouldn't have had to spend as much energy into trying to take out Homie Fei and Scary D. Cog is playing like a very well-oiled machine. Wow, Bickham, Bickham is even still picking going up in. players he's 1v4. Still going and now he's going to drop the cats to give himself a disengage with a slow. Nobody's going to be able to follow up there. Bickham doing good work. And he's going back again because he's got support of Hurrywind here as well. They're doing the purple buff. Spirit Arrow hits all three. The bleed from Flying and all, followed by the pounce. He's going to chunk him down, but Flying and all will escape Tommy Faye arrives to say hello, but he won't continue this engagement as Cognitive is starting to get a real snowball going. Yeah, they're taking advantage of the early lead they have, and they're finding enemy really disorganized, I would say. In that last engagement, or the second to last engagement at the tower, you saw Awesome Nevax. He was running away. Mm -hmm. Then we see Flying or not, and Jerby trying to keep up the fight 3v4. By the time Awesome Nevax turned around, Flying or not was already dead, so a little bit of disorganization from enemy here, I think, causing them to lose a couple kills and now lose their buffs as a result. You can see as this game has gone on the experience, and Gold has just slowly been climbing in favor of Cognitive Gaming. 10,000 experience now at 13 minutes in. We're starting to approach a thousand experience lead per minute right now, Antonis. That's a lot, and an experience is really what's critical in this game early on. You're seeing these level 13s and 14s. That's when you get the second level of your ult, which is just you're outputting more damage to the enemy, oh, and they're Vettin ready. Is great, great beats. beats, though. He's going to roll away. Duke out the Spirit Arrow, which was smart, and did force his sprint as well, I believe, in that one. So sprint was done. It's only sprint one, though, and it's only 60 seconds, but he did get forced out. Nice little attempt from Cognitive, but Vettium gets himself out of trouble. Yeah, and Vettium's really not going to be able to have an impact until he finishes his Ickfall and he needs 1100 gold. The fact that he just came back to lane and his both his actives were forced out and now he's forced under tower. Vettium's in a rough spot here, three levels down as well. He is, but so is the whole team at the moment. As the jungle is taken away, the right Harpies went and the left to Cognitive Gaming. Awesome to the Max does get a bit of split push going for himself, though, taking that tier one tower, but now he's going to get rotated on. Homie Face looking for something. The Will Weaver, fantastic use of Blink, though, from Awesome to the Max to just disengage that completely. Yeah, he had his ult up, but didn't elect to use it, but Cog, I mean, it's still 4v1. They're mm -hmm. going to look to siege it. Enemies rotating in, though. Well, Flyna Nar is going to come around the backside as well as Ares as well in the mid lane. You can see the Lawbringer did get used by Flyna Nar. That mighty pocket with the no escape is going to try and pull people back in. Jerby with the Crips has not hit anybody with that, unfortunately. Class Eco Jerby in the house as Mighty Pocket is trying to live with the barest amount of health. But the thing is, Jerby gets a double. Who needs ultimates when you've got dot damage? Yeah, and now Jerby, he's trying to find Scary D here. It's going to be important to pick up this kill. They're going to grab it triple for Jerby. And I, I was actually pretty... About to go really hard on enemy there. That was complete disorganization, mm -hmm. like we saw before, but they're able to pick up the kills. Famous Hate, he's to? gonna travel over. He's gonna get the split push going on or uh... look for some return kills. No, he's he's gonna go back to farm. He was looking for someone who was weak in that fight and who's gonna get caught out trying to farm I mean, there. If, if that is to Jerby there, he put the crypts down right at the front of the tower, but he does stop them zoning them from coming back through yes. it, doesn't he? So it may have looked a bit odd to us, and I was like, ah, he misses another ult. Classic Jerby, but at the same time, it did make sense to put it there and, and even force with, him into that gap. Even without that ult, you saw how much damage yeah. he was able to output in that fight. And Cog, feeling their lead a little bit too much, trying to tower dive into an Ares. 
and an Apush. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit cocky there. They're going to take a spill. They're still going to be in the lead, though, about 4,000 gold, but they've given enemy a little breath of life because of that. Well, breath of life indeed. 15 minutes in, 14 to 9 now in favor of Cognitive Gaming. The gold experience lead should have shrunk a little bit after that engagement. If you can see that one on the screen in a second for you to see exactly how this one's playing out. Yeah, look at that drop there, Adonis. Down to 5,000, just under 6,000 now. It was at 10 a moment ago. Yes. So it's a big drop. Yeah, and Vedium is still going to be down here, but really importantly, we saw Jerby and Maddie Pocket catch up in that fight, as well as Awesome to the Max close the gap a little bit. Cog, though, they're continuing to be the aggressors. I love this from Cog. You lost a fight, but they're not getting scared because of it. They know they still have the advantage. They're trying to make use of it and look for a pick. Well, here we go. They're looking for the golf here at the moment as the rest of the team's out now. So Beckham's low. doing great work pouncing it in onto Maddie. The bleed is applied to Maddie. Could potentially be dead that he will go out to the bleed, but meanwhile on the backside, Awesome to the Max comes in. Cog, get the golf here with the snipes from Vedium hit twice, but Beckham is getting himself a double kill by bringing down Flying on Nar, and now it's Autumn to the Max is going to run away, but Lurk in the Waters will make sure he stays zoned in for Horiwin to find the kill. Jerby is still alive for the time being, uses the beads well, but he's still going to get hit by the Plock, and now you're going to see the team continue to collapse, and Horiwin's going to find that kill, and the final member, Vedium, he's just going to have to back away to his tower as the goal fury fell to Cognitive again. Yep. Four for zero as well. Cog not only going to take the Gold Fury, but all of enemy's buffs were up. They grabbed those, and now they're going to be sieging this left tower. Only Vedium and Matty Pocket are up to defend that. They're not going to be able to fight into it. They lost four. They lost the Gold Fury. They lost their speed buff. They lost their... Their red buff, and now they're going to lose a tier 1 tower. That is such a huge swing for COG. Tier 1 tower does fall down any second now. There he goes, and the boys of Cognitive all start heading the way back to base right now. Vidium going to poke out, though, Horiwen, who's a bit cheeky with that lazy back there. Needs to watch his positioning, though, just in case Ares does rotate round. I think he recognized that, too. You saw him mm. try and get some return poke immediately back off. Matty Pocket able to secure... Oh, he's not able to secure the left camps. He doesn't have the damage to. No one else is up there. I think the call is to go for Fire Giant, but I is think too they, early? they made the call too late. Ah. If they made it sooner, possibly, but Cognitive Gaming are is already up. They already it recognize bait? it. Yes. This is a bait for a fight. from enemy here. Looking to try and catch somebody out. Famous Hate actually going to come in with the sentry. Clear out the ward at the fire giant. Harpies on the right do go to Cognitive Gaming again. So enemy respecting the fact they're behind now. They're just going to sit back, allow them to like be exploited to an extent and just hope for a fight they, like what happened in yeah, right lane. They, they really need to get dove or they need to counter engage. They can't look for the engage. It's very hard for them to fight into an objective. You saw enemy last time. Just Matty Pocket was so low. He got poked out. Cog took advantage of it. He tried to fight in, but enemy was in four different spots with five different players and... Matty got picked, and there was nothing well, he could do about it. does land over on the right side. Beckham with the pounce does connect as well. Will Weaver is being channeled as well. That's going to connect. No, it's nice to get blocked in the jungle there. I believe that hit Vetium as Homie Faye and Famous Hate were actually blocking out the rotation. And they're looking for the tier 2 tower here. Hollywood is not here. The blink from Matty Pocket does connect with the no escape. But immediately lurking the waters is there. He's going to go down to Scary D. And when he explodes out of this, this could be a lot of damage. And it is. Flying and not goes down. So Scary gets himself a double kill. The Crypt is online. But Jeremy is falling badly at the moment. And rather, Vetium is. Now it's Jeremy alone against five members of Cognitive Gaming. And that is a Deicide. Deicide and... Fire Giant's open. They're going to grab this tower. They're going to grab a Phoenix. And then I think they're going to go grab that Fire Giant. And Cognitive Gaming are looking so clean against Enemy. And this is kind of what a lot of people expected here. Look at this damage from Hurwind. It's almost doubling the damage that Apush has put out. And he's constantly getting those crips on three, four people and getting his combos off. But it just doesn't matter. Hurwind has just been constantly poking everyone this game. 90 minutes in, the first Phoenix has fallen, and the boys of Cognitive are heading over towards that fire giant, as you called. Are they going to have time to do this right now? Do you reckon there's going to be any chance for uh, them to get over here? There's absolutely no chance. Flying or Naw is up. He probably doesn't have Hog 3. He has Hog 1, and Matty Pocket just spawned as well, and this fire giant's going to go. They have two hunters. So where's this game gone wrong, Adonis? Like, where, where, what was the moment? Was it the start of the game when they first pick onto Jerby on that rotation, or was it something else? I think that enemy wasn't able to get their picks rolling early, and it's really Cog more taking advantage of the Ares and Apush pick. If you draft an Apush, you need someone who can peel for him, and, and vice versa. Mm -hmm. If it's an Ares pick, you need gods that can peel for themselves. 
it, it doesn't work in conjunction. You saw that, that they're able to dive and kill Matty Pocket or Jerby before no escape goes off. You saw that on that red invade early on, and then Cognitive Gaming smartly, after getting their picks, took advantage of it, finding objectives. Well, Beckham at the moment as well, 9-3 and 9 on this jungle buster. I think this pick against Alpwashi was a decent decision from him. Oh, it's a fantastic goalless. choice. Just look to pick him at the start of the game. It's worked out well for them. Neath in mid lane, played by Horrywind. He's having a great game too. 7-2 and 11. And obviously, one person we've not really spoke too much about, famous Hey, he's unkilled so far. Yeah, he's 3-0 on 13. He's been a part of 16 of the kills on his team, and he's really just come in on the back end, which is what you want from a hunter, is they're not going to be the ones to initiate unless you have a Neath right there who's able Ooh. to poke out players. Beats but were just used by Jerby there, and Andy was still rank 1 beads at the moment, so Jerby's not going to have them if he does get initiated one more time. It's going to be rough. He has Heavenly, but if he gets CC, and if he gets plucked by Scary D, because of how squishy he is and the lack of peel coming out from enemy, he should realistically should just fall and cog they're going to push up both lanes and focus on this left phoenix first this is the smart decision don't full commit to one lane push up multiple lanes force Wait, enemy to from react. pocket there's the no escape force now the beads and the armor for famous hate at the moment as we traveling along with him he's going to dive straight back onto jerby and he will be the first casualty of war manny pocket will fall to the wayside too he's looking for the third kill as well onto flying on no i won't find as the titan will body block it meanwhile horiwin did bring down flying on no in the end the phoenix falls as well and this looks like the beginning of the end for enemy esports in this game one is cognitive are looking good it awesome to the max though without fearless not enough to survive yeah, Vedium took to the air, got some snipes, but not enough damage to find anyone. Bickham's low, but it doesn't matter. Titan at 20%. It's going to be falling here, and Cognitive Game, they're going to find their first win against enemy esports. Now, you said this before the game even began, that you expected this would be the result of the game. Yeah. And is this just... But they even had substitutes in. They had substitutes, but... There was play. Normally, you see a lot of plays from Meerkat coming out from Cog, but there was plays elsewhere. Hurlwind probably played one of his better games. Last time he played this Neath, he just got shut down early. He was had zero deaths, mm. but he was level 16 at 27 minutes. The Cog team as a whole wasn't very well rounded. There was a lot of misuse on XP sharing. Mm. This time, Cog took advantage of the Neath and really abused it. So I mean. We, we discussed the start of the game, where we, when we picked some bands, we said Bologna, I'll watch together, sounds like a fantastic combo. They brought in Ares, didn't work out. Yeah, I really think they needed a, a more team fight oriented. They needed the Bacchus, they needed the Geb, they needed someone to Yamir, peel. Maybe. maybe a Ymir, someone who can peel for the Apush and help mm -hmm. him get away. You have two gods in Ares and Apush with no mobility. If one of them gets caught out, unless they can combo and burst someone down, they're going to lose the fight. Well, talking about somebody with no mobility, let's have a look at the first blood. Jerby gets himself caught in the jungle in this one. That was, on the that was a really bad spot. Yeah, and, and this is a great decision by Cog. They lose their mid, or they, they lose the advantage early. They get their back harpy stolen, mm. and Hurrowind and Bickham smartly set up Just for wait. a gank. They, they knew where was Jerby going to go. That's right. There was no other path that they could really do to get back to the mid lane again, so just wait in the corner, wait for them to turn up, because, you know, nobody know, knows where they're going to go from there otherwise. So the first blood goes over to him, gets Bickham, going in that middle in that yeah. jungle as well which allowed him to just keep the pressure going i think more importantly it shut down jerby mm. from being able to fight for the first set of mid camps That's and right. you saw that they four man stacked on the left because jerby wasn't five they had to do it with numbers and then cog just traded out with them there was no problem with that and after that it was really mid harpies were dominated by cog for the rest of the game well it was a really rough game for the boys of enemy esports game two though what would you do differently if you want to draft that Apush, you need to make sure you draft a protect comp. Someone who can protect okay. him and keep him alive. But and they started that with Bologna. I didn't feel like Flying On already I, got going in that I game I like either. the Bologna. Like, a, a Bologna or Thor would work, and they work. But you still need the Guardian for when that jungler's not there. Well, guys, we'll be back shortly with Game 2 for yourselves. We'll be back very, very shortly with all the action from the next game of COG versus... Thoughts.